so uh, so till now we are designing the compiler front end of a given for a given programming language and we have covered how to check the validity of a given input sentence with respect to the rules of the given language so so first we tried to see so while translating a given so suppose this is my compiler I am taking a high level language and my goal is to create an uh, machine level language so in the entire process what I, we have seen is first we perform some lexical analysis that checks whether the tokens the given language has are valid as per the rules of the given language okay second is called as syntax analysis where we check that those valid set of tokens can be are are uh, are forming a definite pattern and that pattern is called as abstract syntax tree okay and if they are not forming that pattern then it reports what we call as a syntax error understood in lexical analysis we report lexical error now these two checks are not sufficient to define a given input sentence. So the language also defines what we call as certain semantic rules, okay, which are checked through another engine called as semantic analyzer. Okay. Now, for example, suppose I say that uh, we have seen that in a given uh, language like English we have verbs nouns and adjectives arranged in a definite pattern okay I cannot say that I temple go to. okay this this doesn't form a valid sentence but it will be I go to temple similarly in a programming language like C or C++ we have the notion that all the variables has to be defined first before they are being used okay this is a kind of semantic analysis so let us try to see some of the examples okay some of the basic actions we take while doing the semantic analysis okay so types of semantic action semantic actions performed by a semantic analyzer okay the first is called scope resolution which I have already given you the concept that in a programming language I cannot define the a variable with same name twice okay so I cannot define int a and again another int a in the same scope so so the variable declarations has to honor the given scope okay it may it may happen in a two different scope I can declare the variable with the same name in two different scope where the the variable declared in the in the innermost scope will be used okay so this is called as scope resolution and we use something called as a symbol table to perform scope resolution I will discuss we'll discuss about this details in the next class second is called a type checker okay <coughs> type checker means the left hand and the right hand side expressions should match with respect to a type okay I cannot say a character type being assigned and a string type being assigned an integer or vice versa okay uh, third is another example called as array bound check so this is another kind of semantic analysis which we perform where 
we tries to see whether the array index uses as per is as per their definitions okay that should not be any range overflow suppose i have declared a as a 32 bit 32 element array and i am using a of 33 then it's a it's an error it's a semantic error okay so these are some of the examples which a basic semantic analyzer does okay now the main mechanism a semantic analyzer uses to perform these checks is called as syntax directed translation okay so what is the syntax directed translation let us see So in syntax directed translation, we have, uh, we got the input from the syntax analyzer called as parser a AST, abstract syntax tree. This AST is converted to a decorated AST. What do we, what do we mean by that? That means every node of the AST is attached with certain attribute sets. And these attribute values are calculated by doing multiple pass or traversal multiple time traversal over the AST okay the values are calculated by doing multiple traversals understood so I start, so I may traverse the AST in a top down or in a bottom up fashion, but what I care about finally is every node of the whatever attributes are attached to every node of the AST, they have a definite value. And this process is called as syntax directed translation. So you must be wondering what these attributes are. Okay. So the attributes are nothing but I can say that they are two tuples. Okay. So when I say these attributes, so attribute is nothing but a two tuple. What does this mean? This means it has a name. I have an attribute name and I have an attribute value. Okay. Just let me give you a small example. Suppose I have int a is equal to 5. I can attach two attributes to the given identifier. Okay. That, okay. The attribute name is type. Okay. So the given declaration has an attribute called as type. And the attribute val is a string with a name integer. Understood. Similarly, I can attach another attribute having a name current value. And the value of this attribute will be an integer called 5. So in this way, we attach, so, so in this, so the attributes look like this. Okay. It is a two tuple having a name and a corresponding value. The value can be a string or an integer or a pointer value itself and and the entire process of syntax directed translation is to attach these kind of attributes to every node of the given parse tree okay either in a bottom of fashion by doing bottom of traversal or by doing top down traversal now based on in what way these attributes in a given parse tree are calculated we have two kinds of attributes okay sorry so one is called as synthesized attribute
what does the synthesized attribute means so so these are the attributes that are calculated in a bottom of fashion okay by doing a bottom of traversal across the power string okay so uh, so so the initial terminal attributes we got it from the from the lexical analyzer and while creating the power tree we simultaneously attach those attribute values okay for example suppose i have a rule or a production of the form int can be int in digit okay or it can be a plain digit and my digit can be 0 to 9 okay and I have created a attribute called as uh, val okay so the name of the attribute is val and the value is a integer okay so let us try to see how we calculate this how we create a decorated power tree or how we attach the attributes in a given power tree okay so we have the power tree for this thing like this int can be int digit okay and this digit so suppose the suppose my input string is 24 so i created a power tree int int can be again a digit and this is 2 the terminal 2 and this is 4 okay now now it started with in a bottom of fashion so for 2 I know that the 2 has a val value 2 so I can say for this token terminal token the value is 2 for this terminal token the value is 4 now here the digit for digit the non terminal my digit dot value will be what is equal to 2 okay and my digit dot val is what 4 understood so for every production we attach a semantic rule okay so suppose suppose my production is digit is 2 digit can be 2 is one of the production so for that my given semantic action will be digit dot val is equal to 2 understood now when my production is int is digit what will be my corresponding semantic action my semantic action will be int dot val is equal to digit dot val understood and i use that semantic action to populate the attribute here as 2 okay here similarly digit dot value will be populated as 4 now the topmost non terminal the uses the production what int is equal to int digit and the corresponding semantic action will be int dot val is equal to int dot val into 10 plus digit dot val understood and hence it will be 2 into 10 plus 4 equal 24 so here the value will be stored as 24 so in this way we calculate the synthesized attribute values in a bottom of fashion okay there is another kind of attribute called as inherited attributes okay now these inherited attributes are calculated in a top-down fashion okay for example the the type propagation across the power tree is done through a top-down fashion okay so we'll see more about the uh, semantic analysis in the next class